we're back on our skiff project here again, and the next thing for us to do was to get out all the longitudinal pieces in the boat, and uh, that includes the chine logs. Now, the chine logs are one of the most important pieces in the whole boat. They have to be sawn out of some pretty nice lumber. They can't be allowed to fail. They're the life of the boat. They really extend all the way from the stem all the way to the transom. All the side planking is fastened off to the chine log. All the bottom planking is fastened off to the chine log. The vertical frames are fastened off to the chine log. When that chine log is gone, the boat is gone. So it's an important piece, like I said, and uh, this is the first one we've gotten out right here. As you can see, I ripped it right off the side of this piece of lumber right here. The first rip, I ripped the uh, sapwood and the underbark off to a five degree bevel and then I ripped the top of it to a 10 degree bevel. Now the reason for that five degree bevel is that's basically the angle that is between the side of the boat and the bottom of the boat. That way I just don't have to plane off or whittle off a ton of wood. I want to get most all the wood off with the skill saw cut. Now the next thing I did was I ripped the top of the chine log off to a 10 degree bevel and the reason why I did that was so that when you stand it up in the boat it does not hold water on the top. Now all the other skiffs that I've ever seen and all the other skiffs that I've ever built, the chine logs were 90 degrees on the top and water would puddle on the top of the chine log and that's not a good thing because it, it really gets to your finish and uh, it could soak into the wood. It causes problems. So this way the water will run off the top of the chine log and not cause us any problems. It's just a little extra feature that I've decided to put into this particular skiff. Now, the next thing we're going to do is really rip out another chine log off the other side of the same piece of lumber. The first thing we're going to do is to tack a batten along the edge of this piece of lumber that represents exactly where we'd like to cut it. Uh, we want to remove all the sap wood. We want to leave all the good lumber. We want this cut to follow the sweep of the lumber around perfectly. We're going to take a pencil and draw a line along the edge of that first batten. Then we pull the nails and remove the batten. Now we're going to set a pair of dividers at five and three-eighths of an inch. That's the distance that my circular saw cuts from the edge of the table. We're going to use the dividers and place one leg on the first line that we've made. Make a little radius 90 degrees away from that line. Take a pencil, accentuate it with a pencil just a little bit so that we won't have any trouble finding it. And then we're going to re-tack our batten down through those marks. So here is our batten tacked down exactly five and three-eighths of an inch from where we want to cut. We're going to pick up our saw and make our first cut at 10 degrees. Now we're on the inside sweep of this piece of material, exactly the way the 10 degree cut is cut on this piece on the inside sweep. Now they may look opposite of each other right here right now, but once we've cut this chine out completely and stand them up, you'll find out that they're a mirror image of each other. So we've set the circular saw at 10 degrees, that's the angle that we want on the top of the chine log, and uh, there really isn't any secret to it here, we're just going to follow the batten that we've got tacked down, and uh, we keep it slammed up nice and tight against the batten. There is one thing I'd like to tell you about this, and that is, is that I have the cheapest circular saw blade that money can buy in here, it's got 18 teeth, and it cuts a very narrow curse. The amount of teeth and the narrowness of the curth makes it very easy to cut. If I had 42 teeth or 40 teeth or it was cutting much wider of a curth than that, it just wouldn't cut anywhere near as easy. And then roll the piece over and get started on the second cut. Now, I don't have a rip fence that will reach underneath the table of this circular saw far enough to cut the piece out at 2 and 9 sixteenths of an inch, which is the width of the first piece that we cut. So I've had to clamp a little piece of wood on the bottom of the circular saw here and it takes a little bit of adjustment until you get it to cut exactly the right width that you want. And uh, the fence that I've clamped on here is really at 90 degrees and it's going to guide along here. This is at 10 degrees. So it's not going to be rubbing right on the very edge, it's going to be guiding along down possibly an inch here. And uh, so you'll have to adjust it a little bit further away from the blade than the 2 and 9 sixteenths that you want as a result. Now we're making our second rip on the second chine log and as you can see we're just pushing the skill saw one end to the other and uh, it's nothing like I said before too complicated about it but you do have to get set up properly 
And uh, now that it's cut out, we're just going to pick them up and run them through a bench planer. And uh, we're going to plane it on both sides. And it's going to take a few passes through there to get it to be parallel on both sides. And then we're going to measure the other chine log and make sure we know exactly how thick that one is. And we're going to make sure that this one is exactly the same thickness as the other one. Now here are our completed chine logs. They're a mirror image of each other, like I had said before. I ripped them both to two and a half inches tall and put them through the bench planer at an inch and a half. They've got a 10 degree bevel that's been ripped on the top, just enough to stop the top of the chine log from collecting water. And they've got a five degree bevel that's been ripped on the bottom, which is just about right for assembly so that I won't have to turn a lot of the chine log into dust while I'm assembling the boat. They've got this curvature that's been ripped into them that matches the grain of the wood so that none of the grain is diagonally across the chine log in any respect which could possibly make them break during assembly or sometime afterwards. And uh, they are the right wood to use for a boat like this. Now many of the viewers have asked me why I would use red oak in a boat like this at all. Well, I've built many, many skiffs over the years. I've never used anything but red oak, and I've known many other skiff builders, and I haven't seen any one of them use anything but red oak. There's a number of reasons for that. One of the reasons is, is that white oak is prohibitively expensive and very hard to find. Even if you found a piece this long, it might have grain problems, all kinds of problems, and uh, it just isn't done. The other reason, or one of the other reasons, is, is that this boat is only expected to last, has a lifespan maybe of 30 years. Uh, it's going to die from some other reason, ice damage or who knows what, but it's not going to fail because of the chine logs. In a more expensive yacht that's meant to last 100 years or more, you wouldn't want to use red oak in the bilge of a yacht like that. One of the problems with it, like I had said before, is, is that with a stray DC current, it breaks down the salt in the bilge water and uh, it turns it into hydrochloric acid in solution with water and sodium hydroxide. Lots of people think that uh, boats like this don't have, or yachts, don't have DC current in them because they got an AC generator or there's AC power at the dock. But it has to be converted from AC to DC just to enter the battery. So yachts have way more DC leakage in the bilge than a skiff like this. This boat is not going to have enough DC leakage in the bilge to bother these chine logs at all.